The Levite concludes his report. Behold, <coughs> you're all the children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. And with this, that callous man and unfaithful office bearer leaves our narrative. And I think that's good. And I dare say you think that's good too, because my guess is that you don't like him any more than me. But there is probably something of the selfishness and cowardice that he displays in us all. And the question is, would we have caved in like he did under pressure from the mob and just thought of ourselves? On hearing the report of this Levite, Israel's decision was to go up to Gibeah, seize the sons of Belial who had committed the outrage, in order, as verse 13 puts it, <coughs> to do them into death. And this was the correct decision, because it is in accordance with Old Testament Mosaic law. Sodomy was a capital offence. Leviticus 18 verses 22 compared with 29 and Leviticus 20 verse 13. You might say, well, it was only attempted. They didn't actually do it. But it was an attempted rape, homosexual rape, an attempted homosexual gang rape. And it may well have been that the authorities would have felt that if they hadn't raped the concubine, that would have been enough for their execution. But even if we leave that an undecided issue, the scripture says in Deuteronomy 22 that those who lie with a married woman, this concubine was a married woman, they were to be put to death. So on that text, the word of God in the Mosaic law to them in Old Testament Israel was capital punishment. In the New Testament world, in the church, you do that excommunication. Israel's correct biblical decision was to be enforced with prompt, though not hasty, action. All the people arose as one man, verse 8, saying, We will not any of us go to his tent, neither will we any of us turn into his house. We're going to strike when the iron is hot before this sin is allowed to fester and spread further. We're not going to break up this assembly. We're going to stay here until discipline is enacted and this issue is properly and thoroughly dealt with. Israel's action, based on its correct biblical decision, was not only to be prompt but also prudent. Verse 10, we're going to take a tenth, ten out of a hundred, a hundred out of a thousand, a thousand out of ten thousand, and they will go and fetch food for the people. Because the people that come to this assembly, from Dan, Beersheba, and the Transjordan tribes, the people had come to this assembly only with enough food for their journey, and return, or perhaps a little bit more, but not for a lengthy stay. And they realize this thing might take a while. We're going to need some food. There's a certain amount of prudence here. And Israel's decision, correct, prompt, prudent, was unanimous. All the people arose as one man saying, we're not any of us going to go home. We're going to go up to Gibeah. That's verse 8. Verse 11 adds, So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. One man, but now knit together. Just as it was when they first assembled in verse 1. But of course, Benjamin did not join in. Benjamin did not make this decision because Benjamin wasn't there. Benjamin didn't go to Mizpah even when it knew the other tribes were there and what its agenda was, they stayed home. 
And so Israel suspects that the whole tribe of Benjamin may have to come under church discipline too. Or at least we as the 11 tribes need to be prepared for it if they should make that foolish, sinful decision. And they'd be 400,000 men here. Now 400,000 men is a lot of men to take on the whole tribe of Benjamin, but it's a huge number, a number which in no stretch of the imagination could be judged to be necessary to take on the little town of Gibeah, which could only muster 700. So when the day brings 400,000, they're thinking this problem could spiral, could become a lot bigger. We need more footmen to deal with them. Then remember too, a tenth of the men are sent to get food, according to verse 10. Which would not be necessary if the whole thing is to be settled very quickly with the swift, easy execution of the rapists and murderous sons of Belial. And it's looking at this stage more and more likely that the whole tribe will have to be put under discipline. And discipline in Old Testament days meant Israel is going to have to destroy Benjamin with the sword. That's dawning more and more upon the mind of the people assembled at Mizpah. Having made this decision, in verses 12 and 13, Israel sends messengers throughout Benjamin to inform them that these rapists and murderers of Gibeah must be executed. And this too was proper procedure. Proper procedure. They charge the sons of Belial with sin, calling it wickedness. Verse 12. They state the sentence in verse 13. These children of Belial are to be put to death. They explain the purpose. Quote, it is to put away evil from Israel. Because this thing is going to spread it, as all sin does in the church. It isn't effectively disciplined. Because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Gangrene <coughs> eats up the healthy parts of the limb. And all this is procedurally correct and according to God's word. This is where the story becomes particularly sad and tragic. Benjamin did not hand these people over for discipline. Refused to do it. Despite the grossness of the sin, an attempted homosexual gang rape in the church. It hardly gets any worse than that. A heterosexual gang rape. That goes on in the church and you say, well, these people shouldn't be disciplined. They're okay. They're members in good standing in the church. And then they murder the poor girl. Oh, don't worry about that. They're, they're good Benjamites. They're worshipping the Lord with us. They're okay. We'll let them off with it. Sure, you're sorry, aren't you? Yeah, you're sorry. That's enough for us. If even they could have gotten that, we're sorry out of them. And you ask yourself, if these sins were not bad enough for church discipline, what possibly could justify church <coughs> discipline? If you can't discipline somebody for this then you can practically discipline them for nothing. 